but anyway, so good day, everyone. Uh, and I suppose today we're just going to be talking about Iceberg. So let's see how we go. And they click a little bit about me. Uh, I did leave the LinkedIn account, so I suppose uh, link if you want to connect with me later. But uh, I mean, I, I was born in Brazil, so I suppose being Sydney for a long time, for a while. Uh, I always loved AWS, I suppose, since the beginning. Uh, I'm a AWS fanboy. I uh, suppose being learning and, and doing stuff since for about 10 years, and then I suppose since 2020, I decided to go, hey, let's go and do something real and, and let's do a stuff that gets put into production and, and, uh, and developed. Uh, I've been working with AWS partners for the last four years, so I suppose currently with Civil, uh, and I suppose, yeah, I love what I do. And I suppose Iceberg is one of those things that uh, capture my attention. So I suppose it is a new product, uh, but capture my attention uh, and then try to solve a few problems, or no problems, or try to evolve what you have done in the past. Uh, but anyway. uh, a little bit about what we're doing today. So very briefly, we, what you're trying to achieve, I suppose I'm going to go into a deep dive about what is an Iceberg table, uh, what does it do, how does it work, uh, and I suppose they're going to focus more on, on, I suppose, the ability of, to help you uh, in your data governance journey. Uh, I suppose a lot of the things that we are becoming a very important topic. I suppose before we come from a way where uh, we're talking about, hey, data is cheap, uh, storage is cheap, let's keep everything. And, and I suppose the next stage where we're going now, we're going to, to a stage where, hey, you can't keep everything uh, because as we have laws, we have uh, a, lot, uh, a lot of things put into place to say, hey, you can keep something as long as someone else allows you to do it. Uh, and I suppose that governance uh, is something that a lot of companies don't, don't have it yet. So I suppose Iceberg is trying to, to, to close that gap. Uh, before we go and, and deep dive into Iceberg, so I suppose it's always good to say, hey, what is the purpose? Uh, I suppose we've been hearing a lot about uh, throughout the days there is a lot of products, a lot of good products, uh, but we can't just say, hey, let's go with this one uh, because it's shine. It needs to, to have a business case. So it needs to be important to the business. And I suppose I raised kind of four uh, main business cases for that. So I suppose the first one is to consolidate everything uh, from multiple sources. I suppose we are trying to pull a lot of information from, the, from different sources. So I suppose let's consolidate that. Let's find a source of truth, let's keep that so everybody can go and use it uh, and not be second guessing themselves, hey, is this data sale? Is this from yesterday? Is this from today? Uh, let's keep all together. Uh, also, if you have everything in the same spot, you can govern that data better. So I suppose you can guarantee integrity, you can have your source of truth, uh, and then because at the end of the day, uh, a lot of companies will, will have to, at some point in time, comply with regulatory requirements. And that means could be, hey, if a, custom, if a client comes to you and say, hey, I want to be forgotten. I'm not a client with you anymore. I'm not a customer. You, you, you should not hold my data with you. And I suppose, what do you do with, that, with the data that if you can't remove it? Anyway, let's go have a look at a deep dive. Uh, we love names and we love architecture. And I suppose I just put it a little graph just to show where that data lake sits uh, among everything. So I suppose we know left, we know our data sources, transaction database, third party uh, data. Then we have all the amazing data that we have our sponsors and everyone where we're trying to move that. We're trying to do ingestion. We're trying to do some transformation in that. We move from point A to point B. Uh, and then at the top of, and I suppose, uh, in most cases, that data is going to sit in an S3 bucket or an object storage uh, if, you, if you use other uh, different clouds. Iceberg will sit at the top of that, or Iceberg will be a metadata layer. So I suppose uh, the talk we had beforehand, uh, before lunch, was talking about how do you deal with that metadata. Iceberg is a table format that uh, controls that metadata of the data that you have. And consumer services, you have everything consuming. Uh, anyway, so that's just a high-level design, so just to illustrate where that, uh, where that ice, Apache Iceberg sits. What is Apache Iceberg? First line is an open table format, uh, and I suppose that means it's controlled by a, that uh, an open uh, company, so I suppose it's Apache. So I suppose you kind of guarantee that if you adopt that, you're not going to 
get into many years later when it's a, your project is very popular, you're not gonna get a hash corp saying, hey, now you can't use my project unless you pay me. Uh, so I suppose you will, to some extent, guarantee that if you adopt a Pi Iceberg, it's gonna be free uh, and community driven for, for as long as it's required. Uh, another benefit of a Pi Iceberg, what is uh, useful, is to analyze large tables. So definitely if you have a, a small data set, not necessarily uh, gonna give you much many benefits, but for large data sets, definitely uh, important. Uh, it is SQL query, so I suppose a lot of us data engineers, we will use SQL uh, on a day to day, so I suppose it becomes simple to use and simple to, ex to, to extract information for that. At the end of the day, Iceberg is just a set of APIs and libraries, uh, and that is why it's easy, and that's why uh, at the bottom, at the, at, the, at the bottom line of Iceberg, to have Iceberg is a tool agnostic. So I suppose you can bring any engines that you, that you want uh, to have, and that is gonna be able to query the API, and you're able to interact the data uh, below that. And I suppose it's not storage or execution engine, so you do need to bring uh, that, but again, to agnostic, you can storage, store anywhere you want, and you can also uh, execute anywhere that you want. Benefits, uh, I suppose, again, why do we need, why do we want to use Apache Iceberg in the data warehouse? So I, I suppose we have a data warehouse, uh, databases, and I suppose we start to move away from data warehouse into data, uh, data lakes, dump everything as an object storage, uh, but then you get in trouble, okay, what do I have there? Can I delete it, can I update? Uh, and because Iceberg is an open data management architecture, it brings lots of benefits, and one of them is an asset transaction, asset compliance, so that means a transaction is either complete or not complete. So that means if you have an incom incomplete operation, it is, you're not gonna be on your data, so you're not gonna have incomplete data. So that means you have your data integrity in there. Uh, another item that I love as well about Iceberg is the ability to go back in time. So definitely want all tables to contain, hey, when was that data updated? So how did my data look at that particular point in time? Uh, Iceberg allows you to do that. You do a rollback in case you made a mistake, update a few that you shouldn't do, or simply by comparing or to compare different times or, or how your data look at different times. Okay. Hidden partitioning, uh, and I suppose if you come from from a hive uh, storage, you will know that if you wanna scan, if you're gonna do a select on a table, you need always to inform the partition that you're occurring. If you don't, you're gonna do a whole table scan, uh, but Iceberg goes off, corrects that issue with hidden partitioning. So if you do a query, once the Iceberg table is preparing uh, the, query, uh, the query plan, it's gonna know where partition your data is stored, uh, so that way you don't have to scan the whole table. Scheme evolution, uh, I suppose, very important topic as well because your data never, it always will not evolve. Uh, Iceberg has that built in and how it controls that. So, so that means if you decide to add a field, drop a field, change names, uh, you have a period of time. Once you change that, new data gets written in the new schema the old data is still in the old schema. So I suppose you don't have the expense to rewrite your whole data to use the new schema. Uh, you can bring back forward uh, and then rewrite the whole thing, uh, but you don't have that to do that at time zero. So I suppose it's evolving your schema becomes a lot easier, a lot faster to push through your system. And why it's so beneficial, and I suppose the main point as well, you have multiple and independent applications able to connect simultaneously. So that means I can query using a glue or a Spark job. I can also use Snowflake now. Uh, it's Databricks as well is bringing uh, capability, Iceberg capabilities to that. So now you have all of those different partners. And, and I suppose the benefit, the benefit is you don't need to move the data. And again, that is another point that Apache Iceberg is trying to bring is the data doesn't move. My application can go and query the data, uh, whatever, whatever tool that I have available. Uh, again, open table format, so just a quick comparison, uh, I suppose, between uh, Hive, which being 
which was and probably still is the main point or, or the main structure uh, of table formatting. It was uh, or is a list of directories, but on the other hand, Iceberg is just a list of files. So I suppose instead of you using a whole directory and that directory is your, your, your table, now we have a files, a list of files is uh, the table. And that allows you to do things a lot faster. Uh, a, li a little bit of deep dive now, how the data moves and how is that written uh, in that. So we have data, okay? So I'm writing on to, to S3, uh, and then that data is, resides as a, as a data file, and we call that the data layer. So that data layer is being, and that everything from that is a metadata. So we have the first, at uh, the lowest level of the metadata, we have the manifest files that will control what data, they will tell you what data you have. Then at the top of that, you have a manifest list. So now I have a list and that controls the manifest files. And at the top of the list, I have a snapshot. So every time that you add uh, anything to, 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 uh, data, to a table that is controlled by iceberg, iceberg structure, it's gonna have that structure. Uh, and again, what happens with add? And, uh, and then at the top you have a glue catalog. So again, I, too agnostic, you can use many catalogs to control that metadata. In this case, because it's WS, just use the glue data catalog and then you are uh, in good hands. Adding new, not, new data, okay, I'm adding data. Again, I'm having a manifest file. I have the manifest list that is now linking to the previous data, so I suppose I have a linkage. My latest data always have the linkage to the previous data, and then I have them snapshot that uh, at the end. And then, and again, one benefit of Iceberg is it tracks everything. So if you have a look at the latest snapshot, you know that everything else beforehand is being uh, linked. And then again, ask the transaction. If my, if my transaction was failed now, uh, I would have the data in there, but my catalog will not point to the correct place or to incorrect place. If, if that transaction went all good, all that that catalog does is repoint that to the latest snapshot. And you can do that over and over again. And then transactions correct is gonna push to the latest, uh, to the latest snapshot. All right, so that's how the table structure works, operates under the hood. Okay, uh, so far probably a lot of products will do very similar things. Uh, I think where Iceberg shines, and I suppose compared to uh, things like Delta or Hoodie, is how they merge the operations. So I suppose how it deals with merges uh, is, is probably something that uh, Iceberg is probably ahead of Delta or in Hoodie. Uh, two ways, so I suppose there are two ways that you can uh, control how a table is merged, uh, or how, how do you update, or how your updates or deletes are controlled. The first one is a copy on write, and again, it's good if you have uh, frequent reads where any updates. So I suppose you can see that your data file is stored uh, everywhere, uh, and then you have a data that's being updated. Copy on write is going to write rewrite that whole block or the whole file. So now you have a new file from that. The other uh, mechanism that you can uh, also use for uh, updates is the merge on read. So I suppose that is good for frequent writes and updates. So now I have the same file, so I suppose I have the same file, but now I have what we call a delete file, and that is important. Uh, and then once that you have an, a, a, a view, an update, well, sorry, once I have a select or once I have a read, that is gonna reconcile those two files and just bring me the latest information. So, so that delete files will contain information, hey, that row got updated to this level, to this row, to this value, that row got deleted. So anyway, so it's good, uh, and I suppose both of those are valid approaches, that depends on your business cases. Uh, what happens to your data? So anyway, so the data gets updated, uh, new data, some data get deleted, what happens to the old data? So, this is a structure uh, of what happens every time that you add in information. So keep adding information uh, and then keep moving forward. As you update, as you delete, what is gonna happen uh, eventually 
is you're going to have manifest files and data files that are not being uh, used anymore. So I suppose we refer to them as orphan files. And then eventually, you might be in a scenario as well where you don't have manifest files. Uh, and then everything now, okay, so now those are no longer used. Uh, you can't go back to them because I suppose they are, they are old, they are not used anymore. What do you do with those? So I suppose if you go that over time, you, you, you'll be in a case where you have a lot of files and a lot of those files are not used. So I suppose now you have to, to bring some sort of data governance to that because that data should not be there. The record has been deleted, but in Iceberg, until we run some table maintenance, there is just a soft delete. That data is still there, doesn't get, doesn't get anywhere. Just not referenced, but it still exists. So I suppose that's why table maintenance, I suppose we tend to think as table maintenance, do things to improve our query optimization, improve how, how fast we can run queries, but it's also very, very good point, so it's very important for that, but it's also good for data governance as well, because that allows me to, to, break, to continue to keep that integrity, to keep only data that I should have uh, in, my data, uh, in my database. One of them is compaction, so I suppose that is gonna join, we have a whole bunch of small files into large files, not a problem in there, very simple. We're writing manifests again as well, so you can see we have a whole bunch of manifests in there, uh, rewriting them, we will bring them fewer manifests, fewer things to, to, to read during query plan. Third one is a query uh, expired snapshots, so you can see as you are dragging, as time passes, you have your current snapshots, and then you have your expired snapshots. Expired snapshot is any snapshot that is not used anymore. Uh, so anyway, so you run that table maintenance and then it removes forever from your data set. And then we also always not have that, those orphan files. So if you look at, I suppose just at your data, at the most base level, it's just a whole bunch of files together in a folder. So I suppose how, what do I know if that file is, is, used, for, is used or not? So iceberg table has a way to recognize, hey, that file is linked, belongs to that snapshot, that file not. So I suppose you run uh, a delete all from files command, and then recognize which file that's been used, and then delete all of those organ or from files. And again, so that means you maintain your data integrity, you maintain a clean, uh, clean structure of your data in there. Uh, Calls for actions, so I suppose, again, just why should we use uh, Iceberg? So why should we have uh, Apache Iceberg with us? And I suppose the first call is, again, have your data available to everyone that needs it within your organization with a format that can be read by a range of applications. So, so I suppose hey, I've been in a lot of projects where you spend a lot of time with, with your users, oh, I'm building this, very cool. And then, the, and then you give it to the user, and then you say, okay, I'm gonna do a dump on my other program, or I'm gonna do a dump to Excel, and I'm gonna do everything that I need on Excel. And then you go, okay, but I just explained to you, this is how the new mechanism, or this is the tools that you should be using, uh, and why minimize data movement. And again, that is the key thing for Apache Iceberg, and I suppose that is the key thing to have your data clean and maintain integrity is to minimize data movement. And then with Apache Iceberg, at the top of your data lake, allows you to do that, allows you to use whatever program that you want. You don't need to, to do a dump of that data because you need to, to treat that data or because you can access the data in that particular, with that particular program. And I suppose uh, the action number two is, again, all about privacy concerns. So I suppose we're getting into an area Yes, that is important. Yes, we are keeping all the data that we want, that we capture, uh, but we are moving into an area where that is not gonna be allowed anymore. So we're gonna be asked, uh, especially if you are a big company, hey, I am an older customer, remove my data. And again, I've been in a lot of chats with uh, customers, especially since Optus, where they have customers that say, delete my data. And then they come to us, uh, we can't because if we remove this data, we lose integrity of our data, we lose our reporting mechanisms, 
uh, can't deal with that. Our downstream users cannot run what they want to run. Uh, and I suppose, yeah, okay, so what, if you don't remove that data, you're gonna get into trouble uh, by all of those, uh, I suppose, governing bodies uh, that, they, that establish what we can do with the data. And I think that's it. So thank you very much. <laughs>